Now we are going to look at several recent advances in artificial intelligence which are attracting attention around the world, including here at the Vatican. This includes the announcement of a collaborative artificial intelligence system called Cicero, which is able to play a game called Diplomacy at a human level. Cicero is made by Meta AI. Meta is the parent company of Facebook. The game Diplomacy involves negotiations, use of natural language and persuasion, and a cooperation with other players in order to succeed. Cicero managed to achieve a score more than double the average of the human players it was with and was in the top 10% of players who had completed more than one game online. The AI had to overcome challenges that were seen as exceedingly difficult for an artificial intelligence to achieve, using its natural language to persuade other players of its tactics and strategic reasoning to play and win the games. We're also seeing an explosion of what's called generative AI that can be used to create entirely new things, including artwork. DALI 2 from OpenAI uses text prompts from a human to make completely new photorealistic looking images, like this one of a koala dunking a basketball. It can easily retouch photos and replace images, demonstrated here where it's replacing a dog with a cat. The DALI AI system was taught with a technique called deep learning to recognize images and their associated text descriptions after being fed with thousands of examples. So it can correctly combine text prompts from a user to create these new images. Here it's showcasing a never seen before images of koala bears riding motorcycles. But perhaps the most exciting advancement in generative AI has come via another open AI program called ChatGPT. This chatbot is not only capable of creating very clever stories when asked, but the program can be prompted to other language-based tasks, including writing its own code when given an instruction, even explaining to the human user how it is doing it. Well, this has created a lot of excitement but also questions about the implications on jobs, the jobs of coders and designers. If it's possible for a chatbot to quickly write complex code and design apps and websites in a few moments, what does that mean for humans? And how we interact knowingly or unknowingly with all of this AI in our daily lives is a question finding more urgency with ethicists. Every one of us, probably at least once, was in internet interacting with these new tools that we call algorithms there is the basic recipe that are driving artificial intelligence in our life and probably some one of us has both something on an online platform well we probably was aware that under the product that we are going to click and order there is a simple suggestion maybe you are interested too well, that suggestion, the ability of the machine to understand what we are interested to, is the power of artificial intelligence. Well, that kind of algorithm not only is able to predict what we are interested to, but it produces that the company is selling more things to us. So, artificial intelligence is shaping the behavior of human beings in this kind of existence. And shaping the freedom of someone else was always in the human history something that produced some kind of problems. Uh, sometimes we call it slavery, if there is not any more freedom. Sometimes we call power, and sometimes we call tyranny, if the power was not equal and fair. Well, the new power that we are giving to this kind of algorithms that are driving artificial intelligence in a so huge and unruled space like internet, are they enslaving us? Are they serving for our freedom? Are they a new form of tyranny? Okay, this kind of question has to be arise in the social space, has to be to put in front of a discernment, because especially the weakest and the poor will be not the new victim of this new form of power. Father Paolo Benanti is a third order Franciscan regular and Professor of Ethics of Technology and Artificial Intelligence at the Gregorian Pontifical University in Rome. 
He has been advising Pope Francis on artificial intelligence and was one of the driving forces behind the Rome Call for AI Ethics, a document laying out promises from its signatories to develop AI in a responsible way for the good of everyone. Just before the pandemic, there was already a reaction from the Catholic Church. Pontifically Academy for Life was the promoters of a sort of call, and the name is Wrong Call for AI Ethics, that simple call all the living beings and company of goodwill to stay together on the same side, to say that we have not to push on the weak and the young and the elderly, the most fragile people, to simply exploit them. The Rome Call was signed by representatives from the Italian government, IBM, Microsoft, the UN Food and Agricultural Organization and several universities. We are aware that the call alone is not enough, but we are aware that we have created some connection. We show people that are producing AI, implementing AI, living AI, that together would like to dream a tomorrow that is better of today. That could be the starting of a really positive transformational process. And Pope Francis inspired us, has given us his blessing to continue to go in this direction to achieve a really positive transformation of the future. So he told us that as Christian, we have not to fear technology. We have to fear what come out from the human heart that could be good or bad. And so a bad use of artificial intelligence is our worst enemy. A good use of artificial intelligence could be our best friend to shape a better tomorrow. Father Benanti trained in computer science and is experimenting with the capabilities of some of the generative AI technologies. Actually, the last two years show us a really huge breakthrough in artificial intelligence. There is a huge acceleration. Probably the most important thing is the generative artificial intelligence. So a tools that can simply produce a text like a human can do. Uh, which kind of text? A news, a book, an essay, but also coding. Coding actually is a special form of text that a human being can produce. And so can you imagine, we can move to programming computer without code, simple telling in natural language to the machine what we would like that the machine does, and the machine will adapt itself to doing something. You are writing your code, and you see that in a shadow with gray, the line that you are typing is completed by the machine. You feel strange, you know, because it's, it's like if someone is reading your brain. It's like if, for the first time, the machine is understanding you. So artificial intelligence has to be used in a responsible way. We know very well when we were simple living inside the, the cave that uh, a simple club could be a tool or a weapon. Well, artificial intelligence is the last stage of that evolution of our tools that could be the most terrible weapon that we know. We have to say that we would like to keep artificial intelligence as a tool and not as a weapon.